Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Austerity was probably the wrong solution, scholar says. Central America, political dialogue and cooperation agreement. And EU membership could move back the independent state. And common EU system of value-added tax. Plus, well done the unit. It's Monday, 12th of May. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rick Timmis and this is The Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot door from our website, theunituk.com. Austerity was probably the wrong solution, scholar says. With a number of European Union member states having plunged into deep financial crisis, bailout programmes and austerity measures are familiar expressions to many Europeans today. Professor of Political Economy at the University of Teramo in Italy, Mr Francesco Passarelli, believes that austerity was probably the wrong solution. Speaking on the sidelines of a workshop on the EU for Macau journalists held last week, the scholar told the Times that austerity was not the only solution available. My claim is that it originated from some kind of confusion regarding its effects. When the financial crisis erupted in Europe, hitting some countries particularly hard, some economists suggested that austerity would be a good measure to exit the crisis. Others remained more sceptical, insisting that austerity wasn't the right path to tread. By austerity we mean implementing policies that improve the deficit of the country, let's say by reducing spending and increasing taxes. The professor explained, adding that in the long run austerity can generate positive effects. However, in the middle of a financial crisis he stressed that austerity can be too harsh, it can destroy the confidence of people, it can reduce the GDP and can even worsen the consequences of the crisis. Central America Political Dialogue and Cooperation Agreement The EU Central America Political Dialogue and Cooperation Agreement, or PDCA, was signed on 15th of December 2003 in Rome and approved by the European Parliament in 2004. Following the entry into force of the Lisbon Treaty and the completion of the ratification procedure by Member States in December 2011, the European Parliament must give its consent again. Now, the PDCA covers a wide variety of aspects such as social and economic cooperation, education, environmental and biodiversity cooperation, health, data protection, etc. Well, as with the articles that we have been highlighting in respect to EU investment stroke funding to Africa, the precursor is these legal frameworks which which are first acquired as the enablers. So once this gets ratified through the Parliament, then the funny money will start to flow to Central America. Watch this space, we'll keep you posted. <music> EU membership could move independent state. The SNP government should be prepared to delay its planned date of Scottish independence earmarked for March 2016 to avoid disruption to the nation's formal EU membership, a leading pro-European body has said. A report from the European Movement in Scotland, the country's oldest dedicated pro-European organisation, said that it is unlikely that any existing member would materially obstruct an independent Scotland from remaining in the EU. The group states that there is no straightforward legal rule for an independent Scotland to join, but says that it's inconceivable that European officials would want to strip the Scots of the rights of EU citizens. Hmm. Well, indeed, of course not. In fact, let's assume for a moment that the strategic geopolitical objective for the EU is a United States of Europe. Then a Scotland independent from the UK would be most agreeable. In fact, the next step would be to do the same thing with Wales, essentially isolating England, and then have a crack at forcing the hand of England to accept assimilation into the federal superstate too. That is, of course, always assuming that the European project has, as its unspoken objective, the creation of such a united and integrated federal nation called the European Union. Common EU system of value-added tax. Here's a cracking proposal for an integrated EU tax union. 
value-added tax has been recognized by the member countries of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, for its capacity to raise revenue in a transparent manner. According to the estimates of the European Commission, VAT represents around 21% of national tax revenues in EU member states, taking into account that as much as 12% of VAT receipts remain uncollected each year, a more efficient VAT system is needed to appropriately prevent and eliminate the variety of VAT fraud. Now, there is a number of points to this article. It's a short piece and well worth taking a look at. But the key bullet point for me was this, the time frame. Within five years of the entry into force of this directive, the Commission should evaluate the implementation of this directive and make proposals if appropriate, and communicate the findings to European Parliament and to the Council. So, further proposals will more than likely be next steps in integrating the rest of the taxation system, the endgame objective being that all taxes will be EU taxes. It's one in the pipeline, and we'll keep you posted as it develops. One. From our section, well done, the unit. Dear Andrew, the PM now seeks, having lost three to four years of precious negotiating time, which alone shows a lack of real commitment and intention that any statesman would have shown rather than marketing approach to a domestic electorate as expected of a local politician. So, point one. New powers for national parliaments. Mm, error. He needs to seek a reduction in Commission and Council of Ministers' powers and removal of all legislative powers from the European Court of Justice. He seems to fail to understand the EU Constitution. Point two. New domestic immigration powers. Error. He needs to seek a reduction in central control by the abolition of freedom of movement of people, a fundamental tenet for the EU that their leaders will never remove. Point three. The European Court of Human Rights. Cameron seeks a reduction in interference. <laughs> Error. He needs to seek a robust root and branch change in that court's powers. It will not happen, as it is tied into two above. And point four. Flowing away powers from Brussels. This is a wishy-washy phrase that omits all the conviction of a statesman who has some knowledge or has ever studied the EU, the Lisbon, Maastricht and Nice treaties. He could at least talk about the essential need to seek to obtain the domination of national parliaments in all matters except those dominated by the elected and known EU Parliament, which in itself shall dominate and control ultimately the unelected and unaccountable Commission. What will then be the role and control of the Council of Ministers? No detailed thoughts concerning the revision to the federal nature of the EU's constitution seem to have been undertaken. Well... Firstly, many thanks to Roger Wright Morris for taking the time to put this together. Of course, our feeling is that this very point, or failing to renegotiate a return of power, or indeed a new relationship with the EU, will be the very mechanism by which Big Cheese Dave Cameroni will duck out of giving the promised referendum that is apparently enshrined in law. With, of course, the proviso that A, he be Prime Minister, and B, it's subject to renegotiation with the EU. Today in our video library, I want to take us back to the autumn of 2012 and the State of the Union address by EU Commission President José Manuel Barroso. You might be surprised at what the endgame intention of this European trading bloc is. Make no mistake, the intention is the creation of a federal European state. Now, there's no better time to recommend to your friends and contacts to take a look at this short video, and so I encourage you, and indeed ask for your help, in getting this video watched by as many people as possible. Please help us. Email your friends and ask them to take a look at it. And even better, ask them to contact their friends and do the same also. Information such as this is key in getting people understanding as to what is really being created in Europe. My friends, we are in a war of narratives, an information war. This film, Eurocon, is one of your weapons. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. 
Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.